So what is asynchronous compute? Reading through the comments section of my RX 480 and GTX 1060 reviews, you'll quickly learn that it's a special DirectX 12 feature that cripples NVIDIA hardware and shows just how awesome AMD's GCN architecture really is. Yes, sometimes the YouTube comment section can be very educational. The truth is, we still don't really know how AMD's Polaris and Nvidia's Pascal architectures stack up in DirectX 12 titles and what the implications of async compute will be, and we won't know until we have at least a dozen good quality titles to test. That said, we're beginning to get a glimpse of what the future might hold. The first really well put together DirectX 12 title was Ashes of the Singularity. This real time strategy game created a heap of discussion and plenty of speculation regarding how AMD and Nvidia will stack up in a world filled with quality DirectX 12 titles. The controversy began when it was discovered that Nvidia's Maxwell and Pascal GPUs weren't actually faster using DirectX 12, rather they were slightly slower in relation to their DirectX 11 performance. On the other hand, AMD's GCN based Radeon graphics cards enjoyed up to 30% more performance when using DirectX 12 over DirectX 11. So why is this? Well, many would have you believe it has everything to do with asynchronous compute. It's no secret that AMD's GCN has asynchronous compute engines, or ACEs, built into the architecture for hardware-based async compute support, whereas NVIDIA on the other hand doesn't feature dedicated hardware support for async compute. So then, case closed, NVIDIA messed up despite knowing full well that AMD had implemented support over 4 years ago. But how can that be? Billions spent on R&D only to make a crucial mistake that'll cripple them going forward. Well, hang on a minute, let's just take a look at what's really going on here. Why in a game such as Ashes of the Singularity does Nvidia see no real benefit, and why does AMD come from such poor DirectX 11 performance to such strong DirectX 12 performance? Nvidia would have you believe it's down to the fact that their more recent GPU architectures are already extremely efficient. Therefore, they don't benefit from low level APIs and the features they offer such as async compute. That seems like a pretty convenient answer, but Nvidia might have a point. I feel we are seeing the full potential of their Maxwell and Pascal cards in DirectX 11 titles. They are, after all, extremely efficient when compared to their AMD counterparts. Testing with DirectX 11 titles sees the RX 480 consume the same amount of power as the GTX 1070, which isn't great given it's on average 30% slower. By now, I think we can all agree. The problem for AMD has been efficiency, and these problems seem to stem not just from the architecture, but also the software, aka display driver. If we first look at the architecture and how it scales and adding more stream processors, we find some interesting and perhaps unexpected results. The Radeon R9390 for example features 2560 SPUs, or rather, let's say cores. The R9 Nano boasts 60% more cores at 4096, and they're operating at the same 1000MHz frequency. The Nano cores also have 33% more bandwidth to play with, so you'd expect the Nano to be around 60% faster. However, in reality, the Nano is on average just a little over 20% faster than the R9 390 in DirectX 11 titles. If we look at my Star Wars Battlefront results from the GTX 1060 video for example, we see the Nano is just 15% faster than the 390. So in this title, a 60% increase in cores netted 15% more performance. Keep in mind, there are no system limitations capping the performance of the Nano either. If we look at the GTX 1060 and compare it to the 1070, which features 50% more cores, we see that the 1070 is 32% faster. So you won't get perfect scaling from Nvidia either, but the performance gain is much closer to the increase in cores. This is a real problem for AMD, because as they ramp up the core count in order to compete with Nvidia's upper echelon, this inefficiency continues to amplify. For whatever reason, the GCN architecture isn't able to fully utilise all these cores, and as a result we see much smaller performance gains than what the specs would suggest. This also doesn't help with power efficiency, as those cores are still present and active, even if they aren't being fully utilised. Getting back to Ashes of the Singularity, here we have a game where the AMD and Nvidia architecture actually scale quite evenly using DirectX 11, as this isn't the best GPU test given it's a real-time strategy game, and therefore predominantly CPU bound. Despite that, we see when testing with DirectX 11, the RX 480 and R939 are only able to match the GTX 970, meanwhile the GTX 1060 can be seen beating the Nano. Moving to DirectX 12, we find a rather different story. The GTX 1060 is still faster than the RX 480, but only just, while the 480 does beat both the 980 and 970. The Nano, however, is now considerably faster than the 1060, and even beats the 980 Ti. The odd thing here is that we go from one extreme to the other. Running on the DirectX 11 API, the AMD cards are much slower than they typically are in other titles. Then when we tested with DirectX 12, they're much faster than you would expect. The Fury X for example beats the GTX 1070. 
Basically, AMD has made no effort to optimize their drivers for DirectX 11 performance and ashes, while the game itself has been heavily optimized for AMD's GCN architecture, so the results from this one game make it difficult to draw any real conclusions, so I'm going to choose not to draw one. Moving on, we find Doom with its recent updates supporting the Vulkan API. Prior to the update, the Radeon GPU struggled using OpenGL. Here we see the RX 480 was good for 89 FPS on average at 1080p, while the GTX 1060 pumped out 112 FPS. This meant using OpenGL, the RX 480 was 21% slower. Now with Vulkan and Async Compute shaders enabled, thanks to the use of TSSAA, we see the GTX 1060 maintains that same 112 FPS average. The RX 480 on the other hand gains an incredible 36% performance boost, making it now 8% faster than the 1060. What's also interesting to note here is the i9-390 was slower when compared to the RX 480 using OpenGL. This is interesting as the i9-390 features 11% more cores. Enabling Vulkan allows the more core-heavy 390 to just outperform the 480 as the low-level API helps overcome any efficiency problems. This effect is amplified to a much greater degree when looking at the core-rich Nano, which sees a massive 53% performance boost. For now, Async Compute is only enabled when using Vulkan in Doom if anti-aliasing is disabled or TSSAA is used. So what happens if we disable Async Compute by using Nvidia's TAA method? Well, not a lot, based on what we see here. In fact, the RX 480 delivered the same 121 FPS from a 3-run average using TAA and TSSAA. Given we're using different anti-aliasing methods, this example isn't an apples to apples comparison, but it does strongly suggest that Async Compute isn't really responsible for AMD's stellar performance in Doom when using Vulkan. Okay, so what about 3 d Mark's new DirectX 12 Time Spy synthetic benchmark that allows us to enable and disable Async Compute in two GPU tests? Looking at the first graphics test, we find some interesting results. The GTX 1060 is indeed faster with Async Compute enabled, albeit by just 4%. The RX 480, however, was 14% faster with Async Compute enabled, though I should point out, in this test it was still 11% slower than the GTX 1060. Still, there's no denying that AMD's hardware support for Async Compute does give them a performance advantage in this test. The second Time Spy graphics test shows different performance trends. Here the GTX 1060 was no faster or slower with Async Compute disabled. The RX 480, on the other hand, was 10% faster with Async Compute enabled, though this was a mere 3 FPS gain. So it seems that in certain cases, Async Compute can enable around 10% more performance on the AMD GPUs. That being the case, how are GPUs such as the Nano over 50% faster in Doom when using a low-level API? In that example, we saw Async Compute was only improving performance by a few percent. It's my opinion that the Radeon GPUs are so much faster when running on a low-level API such as DirectX 12 or Vulkan simply because that's how fast they should be. The way in which DirectX 11 works simply doesn't suit the way AMD designed their drivers. The issue here is a key feature of DirectX 11, command lists. This is a DirectX 11 feature that AMD doesn't support, and this is what hurts the DirectX 11 performance. Command lists essentially take single-threaded code and try to multi-thread it. Sounds familiar, hey? I'm of course referring to async compute. Actually, it's probably more like hyper-threading for your GPU. These command lists were touted as a massive step forward for DirectX 11 in terms of multi-threaded performance when it was first announced. So while AMD offers hardware-based async compute for APIs that support it, they didn't bother to take advantage of a similar feature for DirectX 11 at driver level. By failing to take advantage of this multi-thread feature, AMD has run into a driver overhead problem that hampers CPU performance. In a way, AMD has been lucky to a degree. Firstly, almost every reviewer tests with the most high-end hardware possible in an effort to eliminate or at least reduce system bottlenecks that could limit GPU performance and therefore shape the results. I myself do this by running a Core i7-6700K of 4.5GHz, and for AMD this helps reduce the impact of the driver overhead. Also, for the most part, modern games are GPU dependent, which also helps to limit the impact of the driver overhead. Likewise, when testing higher end GPUs, we benchmark at high resolution such as 1440p and 4K. The GPU becomes the primary bottleneck here, so any extra load on the CPU goes largely unnoticed. The driver overhead does however present a real problem for those running lower end or older hardware. It's been seen in the past when testing budget GPUs that AMD is faster when using a high-end rig, but falls behind when using a budget system. In short, AMD has two things working against them when using APIs such as OpenGL and DirectX 11. Firstly, and most crucially I believe, is the driver overhead, which is a particularly big problem for both low-end and high-end AMD GPUs. 
Then you have the core efficiency issue, which async computers believe to help solve, though this could also just be the benefit of using a low level API that stops the CPU from holding the GPU up. So it's my belief that we're only now starting to see the true performance of AMD GPUs in games using low level APIs. As for Nvidia, is there more performance to be had? Should they have integrated async compute engines into their design? Honestly, I've no idea, but it stands to reason that doing so probably would net them up to 10% more performance in games such as Ashes of the Singularity. Keep in mind, adding this technology could also increase the power consumption by that margin. So then, you have to wonder, how worthwhile would such a change be for an already very efficient architecture? In the end, this is ultimately good news for everyone. If the next generation of games do enable AMD to up their game, then we should start to see more affordable graphics cards as a result. Perhaps that's just wishful thinking, but I'd sure like to find out. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unboxed channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.